Ever since 2016, I've spent thousands to try and find my perfect DCS World flight sim setup. And after all these years, why am I replacing it with this? Good shot. Airborne, gears up, flaps up, going right hand turn. Now why am I doing this? Because I need to show you what can be done with a simple console controller just in case you can't afford a HOTAS. Oh boy, here we go. Passing 310. Oh. I'm overshoot. Passing 230 knots. Nine o'clock. You don't need a HOTAS to hit the brakes and make them fly right by. Joker. 11 o'clock. Oh, here it is, here it is. And when he's too close for missiles, you can still switch to guns. Got him. Even the hardest tasks are possible with practice. Completely by the books, air to air refuel. You can explore every facet of DCS world from modern day air combat, or sometimes you don't even see what you're shooting at, to old school piston engine aerial warfare. Whatever it is you want to do in DCS world, I've got you covered. Because today, not only will I show you what you need to get started, but I'm also providing you with every controller profile I've ever made. So you can easily download and import them and get straight to flying. So whether you're new to DCS or like me, you've been around for a while, I hope this helps. All right, first things first, in order to set up your controller with DCS, you're going to need Steam. So if you don't have Steam, make sure you download it. But I figure most people who play games today on PC are probably using Steam as well. Now, you're gonna to need to get DCS one of two ways. First of which, and probably the easiest, is DCS World Steam Edition from the Steam Store. Also, it's worth mentioning if you're planning on using DCS World Steam Edition, go straight to this timestamp to skip to the controller setup portion of this video. The second way to play DCS is DCS World Standalone Edition, which is found on the Digital Combat Simulator website. There are at least two benefits to using this version of DCS. The first is the ED Rewards program, which allows you to put points towards your next module purchase, and the second is the free two-week trial program on participating modules. For instance, the DCS FA-18C is available for two weeks for free if you want to give it a shot in case you might want to purchase at a later date. And after those two weeks are up, you have six months before that renews. And before then, you can move on and trial another participating module like the DCS F-16C for two weeks separately, and then you wait six months for that to become available again. But in order to play DCS standalone, you have to download it first. So to do that, go to the Digital Combat Simulator website, go to Downloads, go to DCS World 2.9, and make sure that you meet at least the recommended system requirements. Namely, putting DCS on a 500 gigabyte solid state hard drive, plus extra space for paid content, and at least, well, depending on what you are intending to play, generally speaking, it's a good idea to have 32 gigs of RAM for multiplayer. But if you're only planning on playing single player, then 16 gigs of RAM is probably good enough. Just, you may want to consider getting more RAM for this game. And then when you're here, simply click on download to download the installation package. And when you do install DCS standalone, Take note of where it decides to install on your computer, because we're going to need to know this information when we want to add this to Steam later. So again, keep note of where it's being installed. And here is where you get to choose which maps you want to install with DCS. Most people play on the Caucasus terrain, and there's many more terrains to choose from, uh, but it is your choice on what you want installed. You can even choose to install it with no terrains, which I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's an option. In my case, I'm going to install it with both Caucasus as well as the Mariana Islands terrain. Once the installation is complete, all you have to do now is make sure Start Download is checked, and then click on Finish. Then DCS will begin actually installing. In this case, because I already have DCS installed in a separate location, it's actually just copying it from that location. So keep that in mind if you have Steam Edition and want to change over to Standalone. DCS is now successfully installed, just hit OK, and now we can continue on to adding Standalone to our Steam library. All right, now that you have standalone version installed, it's time to add it to your Steam library as a non-Steam game. To do that, either go to Games, add a non-Steam game to my library, or click on Add a Game, 
and then click on Add a non-Steam game. Then from this window, click on Browse, then find where your DCS was installed. This is why I told you to keep note of where you decided to install DCS. So in my case, I'm going to go to C, Program Files, Eagle Dynamics, DCS World. Then from here, I'm going to choose either bin or bin MT. In the future, bin MT is going to go away and multi-threading will be the default option. But for now, we're going to go into bin MT and then select DCS EXE. And don't worry if you don't see .exe at the end of DCS, it's there. You just can't see it because you don't have file extensions enabled. Click on open. And then here you'll find that is now added. But before we click on add selected programs, we're going to click on browse again. And then in this case, we're going to also add from the DCS world folder. Let's go to bin instead, and we're going to add the DCS updater exe. Click on open, and now you should have two checkboxes checked. Click on add selected programs. All right, with these two new shortcuts now added, and keep in mind, if you're using standalone version, you should not have Steam Edition on this list. And if you do, you might want to uninstall it because that's taking up a lot of space. Uh, but anyways, Let's go ahead and right click the first one, which is this DCS world shortcut. So right click it, go to properties. And from here, we're just going to make sure that there is a double quote at the beginning and end of the target location. Also, let's update the name of the shortcut so that we can identify that this is purely going to update DCS, not play it. Let's put a space, then put in the word update. Then after this double quote, put a space, and then add the word update in all lowercase. And just like that, we now have a dedicated DCS World Updater shortcut in Steam. Let's close that. Then let's click on DCS World MT, right click it, go to Properties. Then here, once again, we're just going to make sure it has the double quotes on the front and back. If it does not have this, your game may crash when you launch it. So if you find your game is crashing, this is probably why. Also, like I mentioned earlier, one day bin MT is no longer going to exist because multi-threading will be the default version. The day that happens will be the day you find out this shortcut no longer works. And when it doesn't, simply remove hyphen MT so that it looks like this from here, as well as from here. And this is what you want the day they remove the bin MT folder, because when they do, this isn't going to work anymore. So make sure you do this. I'm not going to create a new video just to show you how to remove those three characters. Let's add those back because multi-threading is not gone yet. And there you have it. And feel free to rename this whatever you want. In my case, I'll just call this DCS world to keep things easy. And next, we're going to have to enable controller support in our Steam application. If you guys haven't done this already. You do this by going to Steam, Settings, going down to controller. Then from here, you just enable the toggle that represents your controller of choice. Because I'm using the Xbox Series controller, I'm going to enable two items. This first option, which is enable Steam input for Xbox controllers, and also Xbox extended feature support driver. I'm gonna click on install. And then here, it's going to ask you to restart. So make sure to do that. Otherwise, you will not be able to enjoy the benefits that comes with this extended feature support, which allows you to use the share button as an extra bind, which is really nice for series controllers. Also, if you're not using an Xbox controller, but are instead using a PlayStation 5 controller, otherwise known as the DualSense, you'll want to go to PlayStation controller support and set this to enabled in games without support. Alrighty, and once you've enabled support for your respective controller, in my case, I'm going to go with the Xbox style controller. Then all you have to do is close this and then simply make sure you connect your controller to your PC, whether that's via Bluetooth or through a wired connection. Just make sure it's connected to your PC. Once it is, you'll find that a new controller logo pops up here on the right. Now, depending on which version of DCS you have installed, whether it's standalone version or Steam edition, you'll want to click that controller icon and then from here, we're going to set up our controls. And from this point on, we can actually use our controller to navigate the menu. So let's go to Edit Layout. And then from here, let's go down to the bumper section, specifically for left bumper, click the gear icon, click on Add Extra Command, tab over to the mouse section, then select Right Mouse Click. Yes, Right Mouse Click for left bumper. It's a little confusing, but it'll make sense once we actually play DCS. So Right Mouse Click for left bumper. And then go down to Right Bumper, Click the gear icon, go to add extra command, and under mouse, guessed it, do left mouse click for right bumper. 
Then next, go back up to left bumper, click the gear icon again, go to add extra command again, then tab over to keyboard. And on this one, we'll set this to left alt for left bumper. And then do the same thing, but for right bumper, click the gear icon, go to add extra command, and then go to right alt for right bumper. Then once you're done there, it should look like this. LB executes three commands, left bumper, right mouse click, and the left alt key. And then right bumper executes three commands, right bumper, left mouse click, and right alt. Next, let's go over to triggers. So under triggers, let's select the first trigger option, and go to Create Mode Shift. And then, now if you notice, there are now three sections, one for right trigger behavior, one for right trigger mode shift, and then one for left trigger behavior. Under left trigger behavior, click the trigger option for that, and then go to Create Mode Shift. This will create a fourth section. So now, under the second section, which is right trigger mode shift, I want you to go to the gear icon for this, and then under the mode shift button, set this to left bumper. Then do the same thing for left trigger mode shift. So go to gear icon, go to mode shift button, and then left bumper. All right, with that now set, go to RT full pull, click on add command, tab over to mouse, and then set this to scroll wheel up. Then go to add command for soft pull, and also set this to scroll wheel up. And then under full pull, I want you to go to the gear icon, and then go to add extra command, and set this to scroll wheel up. So when this is all said and done, you should have two commands under full pull for scroll wheel up, and then one command for soft pull for scroll wheel up. And then do the same thing for left trigger. But in this case, you click on add command, it'll be scroll wheel down. Then do the same for soft pull. And then just like before, we go to full pull, go to the gear icon, add extra command, then set this to scroll wheel down. When everything is all said and done, left trigger mode shift will have two commands under full pull for scroll wheel down and one command under soft pull for scroll wheel down. Let's go back up to right trigger mode shift and for this first scroll wheel up, go to the gear icon, go to settings, enable hold to repeat turbo, and then under repeat rate, I want you to press start so that you can edit the 100 default and set this to eight zero instead then hit enter, and then hit close. Then, for command two, scroll wheel up, I want you to go to the gear icon, settings, enable hold to repeat turbo, then again, set this from the default 100 to 80. But, in addition to that, I also want you to change the fire start delay to 40 or 40, and then enter, and then close. Then, we will not do anything to soft pull, we'll leave this the way it is, not a turbo. So again, scroll wheel up will be a turbo set to 80, the second scroll wheel up will be a turbo set to 80, but also a 40 fire start delay. And then the soft pull scroll wheel up is set to nothing. Then next, let's go down to left trigger mode shift and then do the same thing for these as well. So for the full pull command one, go to the gear icon, settings, turbo, 80, and then close. And then for left trigger mode shift command two, go to gear icon, settings, turbo, 80. Then fire start delay, set that to 40. And then close. And then just like before, this first one is going to have turbo and 80. The second will be turbo, 80, and then 40. Then this last one for soft pull will have no turbo setting. And just like that, we are done with the triggers. Now let's move on to joysticks. And for this right joystick behavior, select joystick and go down to create mode shift. Then under this create mode shift, click on add command, tab over to gamepad, and then set this to the right stick click. Next, go all the way back up to the original joystick and change this to joystick mouse, and then click on add command for the right stick click, and once again, set this also to right stick click. Next, go down to right joystick mode shift, click on the gear icon for this, and then set this to the mode shift button left bumper. Then, go up to joystick mouse, click the gear icon for this, and here's where you're going to set up all your customizations for your mouse control on your right stick. So a lot of this will be up to your preference, but as a nice starting point, I recommend a setting of 400% for mouse sensitivity. Then under stick response curve, set this to custom curve. And then for custom response curve, set this to seven zero. And then lastly, go down to the dead zone setting and change it from default to 
custom. Then for dead zone inner, I want you to set this based on your thumbsticks and how old they are. The older your controller, the larger a dead zone you're generally going to need. For example, I know in my case, I need a dead zone of at least 1,500 or otherwise known as 15% because these are slightly older thumbsticks and because they develop stick drift because they're potentiometer based. So I'm going to set this to 1, 5, 0, 0, enter. Let's go back and just like that, we are now done. Now if we go down to the buttons section and review what's in this list, you'll find that there's way more things now added because we set up all those mode shift buttons. In this case, your left bumper section should look like this. Left bumper, right mouse click, alt key, which is your left alt key, mode shift right trigger, mode shift left trigger, and mode shift right joystick. And then your RB section should look like this. Command 1 will be right bumper, command 2, left mouse click, and command 3 is the right alt key. And if you are using an Xbox Series style controller, here's a little bit of a bonus. You scroll all the way down, and this assumes you installed the extended feature support. You get this additional option in addition to start and select, and that is take screenshot. In this case, we don't really want take screenshot set to the share button, so instead we'll go ahead and set that to the keyboard section and set this to left shift. And now, just like that, that becomes a modifier you can use in DCS, which is super beneficial. All right, and just like that, we are now complete. So just hit B to close until the window goes away, and now we are all set. Now, if you have a PlayStation 5 controller, otherwise known as a DualSense controller, and I don't think this applies to DualShock 4, but you can check if you have one, uh, you'll actually have an additional option just like the Series X controller. That is, you'll have the ability to set your microphone key to an additional start and select button. In this case, we'll do the very same and set this to keyboard left shift. And just like that, you also have an additional modifier set to this microphone button. Now, on top of this, there's also additional trackpads as well as gyro options for the DualSense controller. Under trackpads, what I recommend is setting right trackpad behavior to the select button. So by default, it's set to start. So instead, we'll go to gamepad and set this to select. And then for the left trackpad behavior, I'm just going to simply disable this. Let's change it from single button all the way up to none. And the reason why we do that is because we want to utilize the left trackpad behavior for something else, and that is the gyro. So let's go to gyro, and then change this to as mouse, and select the gear icon, and then we will tell it how we want to turn this on. In this case, we want the gyro enable button to change from always on to left pad click. And then the button behavior is not to be on, but toggle. Just like that, we set up our gyro. Then just keep hitting back until the window closes. Alrighty, and with our controllers now set up for DCS World, let's go ahead and launch DCS by selecting either our DCS World shortcut for standalone, or if you have Steam Edition, select Steam Edition and click on Play. In my case, I'm going to use standalone. And now we are in DCS. And if this is your first time playing DCS, you'll probably notice that the music is loud. So, if the music is extremely loud, simply go to Options, go to Audio, then take this slider for music and turn it all the way down to 0% and hit OK to save. And now let's go ahead and test and make sure that this controller actually works with DCS the way we want it to. To do that, go to, oh, my head is kind of in the way. So to test that, let's go to instant action here on the right. What was that again? Right about here. There we go. And from this list, let's select the TF51D, then choose Cold Start in Krimsk. We are now loaded into the mission, and the first thing we want to test is the right stick behavior. Let's go ahead and wiggle the right stick and make sure that actually moves the mouse. And if it does, that's perfect. That's what we want. Next, let's move the mouse over to the green fly button and press the right bumper in order to left mouse click. And now we are officially in the cockpit of the free, full fidelity TF-51D Mustang that comes with DCS. Unfortunately, it comes with a very basic set of default binds and they all, they, they kind of suck. But fortunately, I've got you covered. If you go to Escape, Adjust Controls, select any cell underneath the Controller Xbox 360 category so that this whole column is now selected, and go to Load Profile, then from here you can select any profile I've provided in the description below, and I'll show you how to download these profiles now. To find my controller profiles, just go to the Digital Combat Simulator website, go to Downloads, User Files, then change the type to Device Profiles, 
Then set the username to Tuvas, then click on show. From here, you select the module that you want to download. For example, the Tuvas is official TF51D Mustang, and then click on download. From here, you can simply download it to wherever you want. In this case, I'll just send it to the download folder and open it and go ahead and extract it wherever you want. In this case, I'm just going to extract it straight to the download folder. And once it's extracted, you'll find two files. One is the actual profile that you import into DCS, and the other is an image of what the layout contains. This is the TF51D layout. Next, go ahead and cut or copy the diff Lua file, which is the profile you're going to import into DCS, and send it to the saved games DCS folder. If you don't know where this is, it's under C, users, your username, saved games, and then DCS. And in here, I want you to create a new folder if it isn't there already called input user profiles. Then go into that and paste the downloaded profile into this folder. Now that you have your profiles downloaded, let's go ahead and select the one that applies to this module. In this case, we know that we're using the TF51D. So let's scroll down and find the profile for the TF51D and hit OK. And now you have every single bind I've set up for the TF51D Mustang. Now let's hit OK. And now let's make sure all our controls actually work in DCS. So by default, the right stick controls the mouse in cursor control mode. But if you press and hold the right bumper and click in the right stick, it will switch from cursor control mode to camera control. And now the right stick controls the camera. So that's how you switch between interacting with the cockpit and moving the camera. So let's say you want to look down and interact with these switches here. Well, while in camera control mode, you can also press and hold the left bumper and pull the right trigger. And that allows you to zoom in. Or you can zoom out by pulling left trigger while holding left bumper. So let's zoom in all the way. And now let's switch to cursor control mode with right bumper and right stick click. And now we can test what happens when we left click each one of these switches. And as you can see, we are interacting with all of them. But if you notice, we can only go in one direction with left mouse click. So if you want to go in the upward direction, for example, for these wing and tail lights, you'll have to right mouse click by pressing left bumper. And now those go up instead of down. So left click goes down, right click goes up. Let's go ahead and switch back to camera control, zoom out, then look back forward and let's look at this cockpit light here. In cursor control mode, if you were to mouse over this knob, how would you control this? To do that, you can press and hold left mouse click, then drag the cursor down or up to interact with the knob by turning it left or right. But there's actually another way you can do this. If you hold left bumper over the knob you want to interact with and then pull left trigger or right trigger, since these are bound to mouse scroll up and down, you can use that to interact with these kinds of knobs. All right, then let's switch back to camera control and then zoom back out. And with that, we are now done verifying that the controller is all set up using Steam for DCS. Now, before I send you guys off to the races, I wanted to give you a few tips on how best to use your new controller profiles. So to do that, let's go to Instant Action, SU25T, the Caucasus map, and use Free Flight at Minvodi. Now go ahead and hit Fly, then press Escape, go to Adjust Controls, select any cell under the Xbox 360 category, click on Load Profile, and then load the SU25T Frogfoot profile that you downloaded from the website. Click OK. That loads the profile. Click OK to save. And just like that, you have my bindings for the SU25T Frogfoot. Now, let's go over the basics of flight with my profile. So in order to control the aircraft, you have the left stick to control pitch and then roll. Then left trigger controls left rudder and right trigger controls right rudder. And if you want to speed up or slow down, you can press the right face button to go up and then the bottom face button to go down. And just like that, you now know the basics of flying with a controller. Now, this is Digital Combat Simulator, and it wouldn't be a lot of fun if all we did was fly. So let's go ahead and try to shoot some stuff. Now, before we do that, we need to understand what binds are available to us. This is the layout image for the SU25T profile. Now, I know it's a lot to take in, and it looks like you need a total of four controllers just to play DCS, but trust me, it's not that bad. If you notice, each one of these sections are identified by a shoulder button press that needs to be held in order to access that set of controls. In this case, if we hold right bumper, we now get access to this set of controls. If we hold left bumper, we get access to this set. If we hold both bumpers, we get access to this set. And if we don't hold bumpers at all, we get access to this set. 
In this case, because we want to do some combat, we know that under left bumper, we have access to air to ground mode as well as cannon. But let's see what kind of damage we can do with these two binds. So we know that in order to access air to ground mode, we have to press and hold left bumper and then press the right D-pad direction. And just like that, we're in air to ground mode. And luckily enough, we already have our rockets selected. And even more luckily, there's some targets over there. Let's go kill them. All right, looks like we're in a good position, so let's roll in towards our targets. And all we have to do is put that green circle on whatever it is we want to go away. Let's do that. We'll level out. And once it's in a good spot, we'll simply press and hold the start button. And just like that, everything down there disappears. <laughs> now, let's say we wanted to use our cannon instead. Well, since we're already in air to ground mode, all we have to do is press and hold the left bumper and then press left on the D-pad. Just like that, the start button will now fire our cannon. See? Easy peasy. Now, let's say we just completed the mission and we're currently RTB. And wouldn't you know it, there's actually an airfield right there off in the distance. But we're a little heavy at the moment, so we want to jettison some weapons before we go in for landing. Well, if we review our handy dandy layout, we'll know that in order to jettison weapons, we have to press and hold both modifiers and press the start button. So if I press and hold both modifiers and then press start, and then each successive press will drop each set of weapons. And don't worry, they are disarmed, so they should not explode on anything they happen to hit on the ground. Now, before we can land, let's go ahead and configure our aircraft for a landing. To do that, let's review our controls, and we know that in order to put our flaps down, we need to hold right bumper and press the left face button for flaps landing position. And to drop our gear, we have to hold both bumpers and press left stick click. Let's go ahead and do that now that we're at a safe speed. So let's drop our flaps with right modifier and the left face button, the landing position. And we'll drop our gear with both modifiers and left stick click. Now that we're on final, let's switch to navigation mode by pressing right bumper and up on the D-pad. And then throttle all the way back so we can slow down and then we'll slowly pull the nose up as we descend to the ground. We want to keep our vertical airspeed as close to zero as we can, which is indicated by that arrow on the right side of our HUD. It's currently at zero. And then hold it, hold it, hold it, and touch down. And we'll keep the nose up to arrow brake for a little bit. And we'll use the right trigger to keep ourselves closer to the center line. And hold the stick full back. Now that the nose is planted, let's hit the wheel brakes by pressing both bumpers and the bottom face button to start applying wheel brakes, then let go of the bumpers and start using triggers to steer our aircraft to keep it centerline. As long as we keep holding the bottom face button, we'll continue to apply brakes even though we let go of the two bumpers. And just like that, we've slowed down to a safe ground speed. Now, even though I'm giving you these guides in order to set up your controller for DCS, DCS is a very complicated game, so it's entirely up to you to put in the time to practice and get better at it. Because no matter what, everyone starts somewhere. Whether it's with a controller or a proper HOTAS, you are the one that is the determining factor on whether or not you're going to actually enjoy DCS World to begin with. So I wish you the best of luck, and maybe one day you'll decide to graduate from a controller to a proper HOTAS. But at least for now, you can at least give DCS a shot in the first place. So please, enjoy it while you can, and hope to see you in the skies.